Ilya Satskover. He was the chief AI scientist at OpenAI, the brilliant mind behind ChatGPT and GPT-4, one of the key figures who tried to fire Sam Altman and then was forced out himself. For months, he's been silent, but he just broke that silence, revealing his deep concerns about AI's immediate future. You know, there is a quote which is like this, uh, uh, which goes like this. It says, <clears throat> you may not take interest in politics, but politics will take interest in you. So the same applies to AI many times over. But Ilya's warning reflects a deeper problem, plaguing the entire AI conversation. On one side, you have the hype builders, the insiders and investors who benefit from the AI boom. They exaggerate its powers, promising utopia or predicting doomsday. Either way, they get the attention and the investment that they desire. On the other side, you have the ones being left behind in the attention war. They want to downplay AI's impact, pointing out every flaw and limitation to prove it's just smoke and mirrors. Now, this isn't always about malicious intent. It's often just human psychology responding to powerful incentives. But all these contradicting arguments leave most people confused. So, as someone who has spent countless hours reading the papers, using the tools, and listening to the arguments, my goal is to analyze the battle for the narrative itself, so you can decide for yourself who to believe and how you should prepare for what's next. Ilya started with his feelings about losing a company he dedicated his life to for about a decade. The fact that Jeff Hinton was in this university was one of my life's great strokes of luck. We were doing the best AI research out of anywhere. It was the most revolutionary ideas, the most exciting work. But that was a long time ago. Accept reality as it is and to try not to regret the past and try to improve the situation. And the reason I say it is because it's so hard to adopt it. It's so easy to think, oh, like some bad past decision or bad stroke of luck, something happened, something's unfair. And you can just spend, it's so easy to spend so much time thinking like this. While it's just so much better and more productive to say, okay, things are the way they are. What's the next best step? And I find that whenever I do this myself, everything works out so much better. But it's hard, it's hard, it's, it's a constant struggle with one's emotion. And that's why I mention it to you, perhaps some of you will adopt it yourself. This is a reminder to adopt this mindset as best as one can. And also a reminder for myself, constant struggle. When Ilya broke his silence, he didn't dwell on the open AI drama. After the initial advice, the talk turned into the dramatic, inescapable impact of AI. That is about to happen. We all live in the most unusual time ever. And this is something that people might say often, but I think it's actually true this time. And the reason it's true this time is because of AI. The thing, the real challenge with AI is that it's really unprecedented and really extreme. And it's going to be very different in the future compared to the way it is today. And the day will come when AI will do all of our, all the things that we can do. Not just some of them, but all of them. Anything which I can learn, anything which any any one of you can learn, the AI could do as well. So then the rate of progress will become really extremely fast for some time at least. These are such extreme things. These are such unimaginable things. So right now I'm trying to pull you into that a little bit, into this headspace of this really extreme and radical future that the AI creates. But it's also very difficult to imagine. It's very, very difficult to imagine. It's very difficult to internalize and to really believe on an emotional level. Even I struggle with it. And yet, the logic seems to dictate that this very likely should happen. You know, there is a quote which is like this, uh, uh, which goes like this. It says, <clears throat> you may not take interest in politics, but politics will take interest in you. So the same applies to AI many times over. By simply using AI and looking at what the best AI of today can do, you get an intuition. You get an intuition. And as AI continues to improve in one year, in two years, in three years, the intuition will become stronger. And a lot of the things that we are talking about now, they will become much more real. They'll become less imaginary. And especially with AI, the very smart, super intelligent AI in the future, there will be very profound issues. But overall, by simply looking at what AI can do, not ignoring it, when the time comes, that will generate the energy that's required to overcome the huge challenge that AI will pose. 
And the challenge that AI poses in some sense is the greatest challenge of humanity ever. And overcoming it will also, have the, will also bring the greatest reward. In some sense, whether you like it or not, your life is going to be affected by AI to a great extent. And so looking at it, paying attention, and then generating the energy to solve the problems that will come up, that's going to be the main thing. So that's Ilya's view. Intense, urgent, and focused on imminent radical change. But to understand the full debate, you have to hear from the other side of the argument, represented by another giant in the field, Jan Lacan. He famously has a radically different take. So you're going to have, you know, within a few years, two years, I think, for some predictions, uh, a, a country of geniuses in a data center. I think it's nonsense. It's complete nonsense. And it's much more difficult to deal with the real world than to deal with language. And so the, the type of architectures that I think we need for systems that really can deal with the real world is completely different from the ones that we deal with at the moment. I think the, this concept that I'm, I'm describing of systems that you know, can learn uh, abstract mental models of the world and use them for reasoning and planning, I think we're probably going to have a good handle on getting this to work at least at a small scale within three years, three to five years. And then it's going to be a matter of you know, scaling them up, et cetera, um, until we get to human level AI. Now, here's the thing, historically in AI, um, there's generation after generation of AI researchers who have discovered a new paradigm and have claimed that's it, within 10 years we're going to have, or five years or whatever, uh, we're going to have human level intelligence, we're going to have machines that are smarter than humans in, in all domains. And that's been the case for 70 years. Um, and it's been those, you know, those waves every 10 years or so. Um, the current wave is also wrong. So the idea that you, know, you just need to scale, scale up LLMs or have them generate you know, thousands of sequences of tokens and select the good ones to get to human level intelligence. Are you gonna have, you know, within a few years, two years, I think, for some predictions, uh, a, a country of geniuses in a data center to quote uh, someone who re will remain nameless? I think it's nonsense. It's complete nonsense. I mean, sure, there are going to be a lot of applications for which you know, systems in the near future are going to be, you know, PhD level, if you want. But in terms of, you know, overall uh, intelligence, no, we're still very far from it. I mean, you know, when I say very far, it might happen within a decade or so. So it's not that far. And Jan Lacan isn't an outlier. Other influential figures like Demis Hassabis, Sundar Pichai and Sergey Brin are much closer to his conservative timeline than you might think. Uh, AGI before 2030 or after 2030? Uh, 2030. Boy, you really kind of uh, put it on that fine line. Yeah. I'm gonna, I'm gonna say before. Before. Yeah. Demis? I'm just after. Just after. Yeah. Okay. Um. No pressure, Demis. <laughs> no, exactly. Well, I have to go back and get working harder. Will the AI think it has reached AGI by 2030? I would say we will just fall short of that timeline, right? So I think it'll take a bit longer. So if many key players believe AGI is still far away, why would someone like Dario Amadei, the CEO of Anthropic, go on an interview to say this? Dario, you've said that AI could wipe out half of all entry-level white-collar jobs and spike unemployment to 10 to 20 percent. How soon might that happen? But I think what is striking to me about the, the, this, this AI boom is that it's bigger and it's broader and it's moving faster than anything has before. And so compared to previous technology changes, I'm a little bit more worried about the labor impact simply because it's happening so fast that yes, people will adapt, but they, they, they may not adapt fast enough. And so there, there, you know, there, there may be an adjustment period. Dario's warning, just like Ilya, sounds much more urgent. And this is where incentives become impossible to ignore. When you're Google, you can afford a long-term view. But a smaller lab is only relevant if AI is seen as the most immediate and impactful tech to focus on right now. Beyond the incentives, there is truth to Dario Amadei's claim. AGI might be far away, but do we even need AGI to automate jobs and replace people? You probably don't like the answer. Just to make it explicit, because we've been touching on it here, even if AI progress totally stalls, you think that the models yes. are really spiky and they don't have general intelligence, yes. 
it's so economically valuable and sufficiently easy to collect data yes. on all of these different jobs, these white collar job tasks, yes. such that to Shalto's point, we will, we should expect to see them automated within the next five years. Yeah. Like Even we, if we you need to hand well, spoon every single task yes. to the model. It's like economically worthwhile to do so. Even if like algorithmic like progress stalls out and like we just never figure out how to like keep progress going, which I don't think is the case. Like it, that hasn't stalled out yet. It seems to be going great. Um, the current suite of algorithms are sufficient to automate white collar work provided you have enough of the right kinds of data. Yes. And in a way that like compared to the TAM of salaries for all of those kinds of work is so like trivially worthwhile. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, exactly. So some experts think AGI is far away. Some think it's closer. But they mostly agree. Job disruption, or in other words, AI automation, is really close. And it probably happens industry by industry and occupation by occupation, rather than a blanket human retirement event. Perhaps the most immediate example is self-driving, an AI that for sure is not AGI. But it seems like we are already at the era of automated transportation, which is one of the biggest job categories in the world. My, my prediction is that probably by the end of next year, uh, we'll have t uh, probably hundreds of thousands, if not... Um, hundreds of thousands? If not, if not uh, over a million Teslas doing self-driving in the U.S. What percentage of those are going to be, well, not the cyber cab, you're just talking about on full self-driving, level four? Unsupervised full self-driving, right. meaning you do not need to pay attention. Right. For, for me, if I own a Tesla and I have the software and the capability of doing it. Yes. Right. If you're a Tesla owner, right. uh, you'll be able to add or subtract your car to the fleet. So just like in Airbnb, you could like rent out your spare bedroom or rent mm -hmm. out your house um, when you're not using it. And uh, the same thing will be uh, available for Tesla owners. In this view, AI automation is imminent. And it starts from industries with a larger addressable market like transportation and the ones closer to the researchers like coding and the AI research. It slowly takes over the entire white collar jobs category. But respectable experts on rapid economic growth have a totally different view. They somehow take the exact opposite stance, saying even if we achieve AGI, we won't see rapid economic growth and societal change. There's the perspective of the economist, but also that of the anthropologist, the sociologist. They all matter. But I think the more you stack different pluralistic perspectives, the harder it is to see that there's any simple lever you can push on, intelligence or not, that's going to give you breakaway economic growth. So what you'd call prediction markets are not forecasting super rapid growth anytime soon. If you look at what experts on economic growth, right, we had Chad Jones here yesterday, uh, he's not predicting super rapid growth, though he thinks AI might well accelerate rates of growth. So the experts and the markets agree. Wh who am I to say different from the experts and You're the markets? You're an market? expert. <laughs> yeah, so but I'm with the other experts. Why won't we have explosive economic growth 20% plus because of AI? It's very hard to get explosive economic growth for any reason, AI or not. One problem is that some parts of your economy grow very rapidly, and then you get a cost disease in the other parts of your economy that, for instance, can't use AI very well. Look at the U.S. economy. These numbers are guesses. But government consumption is, what, 18 percent? Healthcare is almost 20 percent. I'm guessing education is 6 to 7 percent. The nonprofit sector, uh, I'm not sure of the number, but you add it all up, that's half of the economy right there. How well are they going to use AI? Is failure to use AI going to cause them to just immediately disappear and be replaced? No, that will take, say, 30 years. So you'll have some sectors of the economy, less regulated, where it happens very quickly, but that only gets you a modest boost in growth rates, not anything like, oh, the whole economy grows 40% a year, in a nutshell. You and I have our own convictions on where we stand, but beyond personal beliefs, if we take the average view of the most influential minds, it's something like this. AGI is probably about 5 to 10 years away, possibly more. Narrow AI automations are going to be a massive new leverage and therefore impact jobs, but it is highly sparse and dependent on the industry. And there is a fundamental disagreement between AI researchers and tech enthusiasts versus economists and social scientists on how much economic growth and more general societal change will come as a result of AI. So if we stack up all the evidence, a clear hierarchy emerges. The AGI timeline is a speculation. The speed of economic growth is a debate. But the arrival of job-disrupting automation 
is a present day reality. That is the one truth everyone from Ilya Sotskover to the economists ultimately agree on. And it means the only rational action is to focus on the tangible shifts happening now, not the hypothetical ones in the future. Look around yourself and stay on the toes for when your industry is targeted by AI. If you have any interesting views on the subject or any personal experience, please share it in the comments. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one.